Hey everyone, this is Mr. F again. Welcome back to lesson 19 of our study of the Catechism. Let's begin this lesson with a prayer, as always. So make sure you can scroll down and find the prayer. If you're catching up on this lesson, you're a little behind, you might have to scroll way up to the top of the page to find the prayer. When you're ready, we'll begin together with our right hands. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. If you look to my right, you should see lesson 19th. So this time, we're talking about the ends for which the Holy Eucharist was instituted. Now this means we're talking about why Jesus gave us Holy Communion. Okay, so this is really important. Some of you just received your First Communion not too long ago. Some of you are going to receive it really soon. And then some of you are going to receive it a year from now. So we can all be getting ready, and this is really important for all of us. Okay, I'll read the first question out loud, and then we can all read the answers together. All right, first question. Why did Christ institute the Holy Eucharist? All together, Christ instituted the Holy Eucharist, one, to unite us to himself, and to nourish our soul with his body and blood. Two, to increase sanctifying grace and all virtues in our soul. Three, to lessen our evil inclinations. Four, to be a pledge of everlasting life. Five, to fit our bodies for a glorious resurrection. And six, to continue the sacrifice of the cross in his church. Okay, these are really cool things. So why did Christ give us Holy Communion? The answer is because he wants us to be one with him. So that we can know him better, love him more, and serve him in this world and then be happy with him forever in heaven. Okay, next question. What is Holy Communion? Altogether, Holy Communion is the receiving of the body and blood of Christ. Okay, so when we say First Communion, we mean the first time that you receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, next question. What is necessary to make a good communion? Altogether, to make a good communion, it is necessary to be in the state of grace and to be fasting for one hour from food and all drinks except water. Okay, what does this mean? Well, if we want to receive our First Communion and every other communion after that, well, if we want to do a good job and really love our Lord Jesus Christ, then we need to be in a state of grace. That means that we don't have a big sin on our soul. A mortal sin, in other words. If we have a big sin, if we did something really bad, then we should make sure to go to confession and ask God for forgiveness 
for that sin before we receive Holy Communion. So if you told a really bad lie one week and it was, it was really bad and it really hurt someone, then before receiving communion, you should be sorry for that sin and go to confession. So if you're going to Sunday Mass, find Father Jeremy or whoever the priest is behind the altar in the sacristy and ask for a confession. So that way you can receive Holy Communion. If you don't have time or if you can't find them, then when you're in Mass, instead of receiving Communion, you can still walk up, but you cross your arms over your chest like this. And then Father Jeremy or whoever the priest is will give you a blessing like this instead of giving you Holy Communion. So that's, so that's good. And then you can follow your family back to your pew. Now, if we are in a state of grace, we have, we have no big sins on our soul, then we just need to remember that for one hour before Mass, we shouldn't be eating food or drinking anything except water. Water is okay because we want our mouths and our bodies to be clean to receive Jesus. Okay, last question. Does he who receives communion in mortal sin receive the body and blood of Christ? Altogether, he who receives communion in mortal sin receives the body and blood of Christ, but does not receive his grace, and he commits a great sacrilege. Okay, what does this mean? This means that if you have a big sin on your soul, you committed a mortal sin, and you still receive communion, that means you're doing something very bad. You're not ready to receive Jesus Christ in your body like that. You have to prepare yourself first by going to confession. But And so if you don't, it's called a sacrilege. It means that you're, you're putting Jesus in a place that's not clean and not good and not ready for him. So we want to make sure that we're always ready to receive Jesus in communion. So if you're not ready, if you have a big mortal sin on your soul and you haven't gone to confession yet, make sure to cross your arms like this when you go up at, uh, at the communion time and the priest will give you a blessing instead of giving you communion. And then as soon as you can, right after Mass, or the next day, you can call the church or find Father Jeremy right after Mass and ask to go to confession. That way you can be ready the next time to receive communion. Okay, I hope you all enjoy the game quiz for this week, and take care. God bless and have a blessed Lent.